Here's the radical halogenation hand down. Like I said, I think this is a complicated fact because it's important to have a nice, clear example. It's a radical substitution. Um, the halogens that this works with are fluorine, bromine, or chlorine. Yesterday or before, I said that we don't use fluorine very much. Uh, but radical halogenations can work with fluorine, not with iodine. There's the initiation step, uh, propagation, and the germination step. So we've got the key ideas here. The initiation step is when we break the chlorine into two pieces that are radicals. Now remember, what are we going to be doing? We're substituting a chlorine for a hydrogen. We're substituting a chlorine for a hydrogen. So the first propagation step is when we remove the hydrogen. And the second propagation step is when we add the chlorine. That's how I can remember what happens in the propagation steps. First, we have to remove the hydrogen to make room for the chlorine. We can't add the chlorine first because there would be no room. Mm -hmm. We know that we're going to be substituting the chlorine for the hydrogen, but it doesn't make sense to add the chlorine first because there wouldn't be any room. First, we have to make room for the chlorine by removing the hydrogen. And then, now clearly there's room here because this is a radical. Now that there's room, now we can stick a chlorine in. And that regenerates another chlorine radical that can steal another hydrogen and go through the process again. So this also produces hydrogen HX as well, even though that's not very interesting to us. This will be one of the products. So these are the two products. The interesting one is the organic product that's got the chlorine, but also one of the chlorines will end up with the hydrogen. This is the hydrogen that the first chlorine stole from the alkane to make room for the second chlorine. And like I said, the termination steps are really not all that interesting to us because they don't, they don't happen very much compared to the billions of times that the propagation steps happen. The propagation step gives us the main product. So how would you know when you need to use this on a problem? Well, again, remember, anytime you're starting with a starting material with no functional groups, this is really the only thing you know how to do. This is the only thing I think you're going to learn for the whole class that you can do when you have no functional groups. So you could call this functionalization. Functionalization is when you're adding a functional group where there were no functional groups before. Well, this is the one way we know how to functionalize something. So one thing I would do when you get home is just take a blank piece of paper and try to write this mechanism out from memory, because I, I certainly found it hard to remember it. Let's go through the mechanism here. Draw one of my that's right. We're going to have to draw in the hydrogen that's going to react. Good. 
totally breaking that bond, so let's do this. Should I keep the audience in the right now? Oh, Jeopardy left. That's just a matter of taste. Would this make this a double bond? So the reason you're having difficulty there is that we didn't quite get all the right arrows. Remember that if you draw the arrows incorrectly, that will tell you what to do. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. We know what's happening to this electron in the bond, but we didn't put in an arrow that says what's happening to this electron. But it looks like now you remember that's turning me into an unfair electron. So that's an arrow that looks like this. The electron is taking a very short journey from being in the bond to being an unpaired electron. So no, in this case, we're not going to form a double bond, because that would require even more electrons from the rest of the molecule. That's just not what happens to happen here. So yeah, leaving out this arrow um, is uh, definitely a mistake, because it makes it hard to draw the next product. Good. Yeah, so I think we can stick here with our bond line notation. Now we have an unpaired electron on this carbon. By the way, before I forget, it might be a good habit to, well, no, I'll get back to that. You're doing fine, so let's just go on to the next step. Yeah, that's right. We know that who's going to participate in the next step? Well, the radical. Now this is going to react with a non-radical. Well, there's really only other one non-radical around, which is this chlorine. simply breaking this bond like this, that would be like an initiation step. Yeah. Then we wouldn't have anything to do with this. Uh, you know how I remember that? Because it takes the energy from that radical to get it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And we can't forget that this electron is moving here. Good. could draw the termination steps. Before we do that, though, just tell me in words, what's the most likely thing that will happen next after this step? What's the most likely thing to have happen next? It's going to do it all over again. And the Let's label these the steps, first gonna, of all. What, what's, I'm sorry, let me uh, interrupt. What's the name for this step? The initiation. Yeah, this is initiation. What's the name for this step? Propagation step one. And this step? Propagation step two. Good. All right, so now we can say what's most likely to have happen now after propagation step two? The radical is going to find a non-radical and have another propagation step. Propagation step one. one. Which radical is? The chlorine. Right, because we can see that the product of propagation step two is a starting material for propagation step one. So what's most likely to have happen now is that this radical will go back and do another propagation step one. Okay. Now, if you were just trying to predict the product, you can just stop right here because we've got the major product. But if your instructor actually, actually asks you for the termination steps, you have to draw those. And that's likely to happen. So let's draw the termination steps. Can I just choose one to terminate with? Yeah, well, we'll try drawing all of them. But you can choose whichever one you want to start with. That's a good one to start with. 